Keith Caputo heeft een gedaantewisseling ondergaan. Lora de Musica zocht hem op in zijn woon- en geboorteplaats Brooklyn, New York. En sprak met hem over zijn eerste soloplaat en over zijn roerige leven. Last time I visited Holland was I was with Life of Agony, and um, I believe uh, we played this little tent. I think it was at the Lowlands, and. Um, it was really, really packed and really electrifying, you know? It was exciting. I had a good time. I'm trying to think if we played twice that day. Thank you. Thank you. No matter what, I think we'll always get the point across. You know, whether distortion is on volume 10, and, and it's, you know, we don't need ferociousness, I don't think, to get across. I mean, personally, I can do with or without ferociousness, you know, because I know the, the message will, 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 will be put across clearly. How's this fucking heavy shit? Is this shit on? It works? Yo, yo, Keith. Yo, Keith. Yo, fuck it, dude. Let's just do one. Let's just do fucking one. We got the rest of the rest of the canvases. We see the brand of fans that are done to the way it can't do it. We got the I hate metal. I don't hate anything. But, uh... I can't sit there and listen to metal. You know what I mean? I'm not into it. I was into Beethoven, John Lennon, Chopin, a little bit of Elvis, The Beatles, Rod Stewart. Life of Agony to me was a very 17 year old slash to 21 years old type of a thing. Yeah. You know, a very angry thing, a very angst ridden expression. I have my angers, but I deal with my anger in a very different way. Life of Agony was Joey's thing, man. It was Joey's energy. It was so Joey's energy that I just felt like at a place. I never felt a sense of acceptance. I always felt like the oddball. For about eight to nine months, we didn't speak. Afterwards, we, we spoke and I don't know, you know? My relationship with Joey is still the same. I was given this thing, this gift of expression, and it was up to me to either sell myself out, sell my people out, sell my listeners out, and speak 
truthless truth. A lot of those lyrics weren't mine. A lot of those lyrics were Alan's, you know? And that's, that was another difficult thing. You know, Alan had a totally different state of mind than I did. Alan was very angry, man. Very total, different person than I was, man. It was, it was in his lyrics. So, you know, you have this person writing lyrics because obviously I was the vocalist and I had to sing his state of mind. It was a very uncomfortable thing, man. People don't realize how naked being a vocalist is, how vulnerable you are to the people, how naked you become, how, how you're giving yourself, how you, dude, I wouldn't, you know, I don't know. There's no difference in being up there and singing for the people than like, you know, fucking myself with a dildo in front of people or masturbating in front of people. It's the same thing. It's like I'm sexing myself. The higher energies are sexing me. And I gotta be pure. I gotta be innocent when all of that goes down. And if I'm not, then I have, like, I emotionally become very disordered, very disorderly, man, you know what I mean? And, and that's why I had to leave. Woo! See, this is what I really like, fucking cooking this vehicle. This song originally was about my fascination with um, the whole look of, you know, the whole heroin look. And then I kind of like incorporated the feelings of loss and, um, feelings of loss and I wouldn't say not despair but just feelings of loss and aloneness from not knowing who there's another song for, for my mother from my mother you know for my mother basically you know being that she OD'd and I'm kind of fast you know it's just like this intermixed thing and it's called Brandy Duvall because my mother's name was that that was her my father gave her a pet name her real name was Marilyn, and they named her Brandy. My father named her Brandy. A messed up heroin chick. And she's gonna do it again. the turn of the century anything goes and I said anything goes I'm after heroin chick and that junkie shit made my poor family sick Devoted to this woman. I'll show you, I'll share my, my my personal intentions. This is like my mother that everyone that I write about usually. Mm-hmm. That um 
she, she OD'd when she was 20. My record goes out to this woman right here, mm. the woman who spit me out and, and put me on this earth. <laughs> but I figured I'd share that with you. I think she's beautiful, actually, you know? Some of her hair as well. Strawberry blonde And it's the turn of the century And anything goes And I said anything goes And sometimes life behaves like a monkey dear friend, the precious energy that I came out of. I never knew her, so there was always this loss, this missing link. I don't even know her family. You know, it's very difficult for me to contact them. They're in Rio, I don't, I don't know, they're just scattered. There's just no togetherness. And I never had that sense of togetherness. I had a lot of love from my grandparents, my cousin Joey, but as a child, there was this different love that I needed. And it was obviously from my mother and father. And your father? What's, what's he was just, you know, caught up in having a, living his, his own wilderness, hitting bottom, you know, stealing, robbing, cheating, corrupting, destroying himself. But he was caught up in, in, in something that he was never around, but he taught me the world, you know? is definitely a tragedy, but it's a positive tragedy. And what happened to him? Well, he's still alive now, but now he's, he's kind of sick. You know, he has, he has cancer, and he's battling his... He's trying to stay straight, trying, trying to persevere, and, and, you know, it's difficult. My father's never been around, but he taught me the world. He taught me what not to do. I'm in, like, the rock and roll life. There's heroin, there's coke, there's ecstasy, there's drugs all over the place, you know? And it's like, I think if I was brought up with my father, and if my mother never did die, and this came into my life, then I would have probably been dead already. What part of Brooklyn is this? Is it, I mean, is it a good neighborhood? This is, is it? um, it's a good neighborhood, it's nice, you know? It all, de it all depends on, every, every, every individual has a different preference on where he wants to live. It's good for me, you know? Mm -hmm. Right over there is... Which one? The one with the tree in the, in the, in the, in the garden, the front garden, is where, I, is where I was born. Right here. been here in a, in a while. Joey lived here, my cousin Joey. He lived there. And then as children, we and my father and his girlfriend lived down there. Yeah. And my uncle lived down there. It was like we were all together. And then the seasons tore us apart, you know? Yeah. 
but it's cool. But when did they all leave? Everyone left at a different time. So how does it make you feel now on your own here in Brooklyn? Does it make you feel lonely in a way? Or? Um, yeah. Yeah? Do you miss all those people? Or? Of course. Yeah? Yeah. But I'm missing something that can never be again. So it's, I, I just can't look back. I just have to keep, keep on. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uncle V. What's up, man? Yeah, oh, I love you. I love you too. How you feeling? Good. I'm looking outside. This is my Uncle V. Cameras, man. I said, what's going on? I said, yeah, that's Kitty, man. I said, holy shit, man. How you do? <laughs> They're from Holland. So who are you? From Holland. I've been his next door neighbor since he's born. Man. We've lived on the block all our lives over here. It's, it's little Kitty, man. He's doing great, man. Real proud of him. Real great kid. Real good kid. Tell him how I used to wake you up million, in the morning. Million, million memories, man. Kitty, you know, we're on the block all my life here. And he was born here and everything. Uh, I don't know memories about him. He was always a good kid. Waking uh, you up? Hung out with uh, his cousins all the time. He used to wake me up in the morning and say, what's going on, man? We used to hang out a lot of late nights also and hang out. I used to wake you up at the piano? All good stuff. It was all good, man. Uh, yeah, Sunday mornings I'd wake up to nice music all the time. He's always into music that I like, old Lennon, rock and roll. Lennon. Little Lennon, Led Zeppelin and stuff like that. I'd wake up on Sunday morning, I could just hear the piano through the walls, man. i say, oh, Keithy, play me a song, <laughs> man. And that I remember a lot of, man. He's done a lot of practice. He's, he's really put a lot into his music. It's right here by the door. I see him every day when I walk out of the house. And he calls me from everywhere, wherever he's playing. He's called me from Texas. He's called me from L.A. He's called me from everywhere. So basically, we always keep in touch. He's a good kid. He remembers where he came from also. Man. That's important roots. sometimes. It's important, the roots, man. The roots. Hell yeah. It's important. We all grew up on this block together. I'm here for uh, 45 years on yeah. this block. So. There's nothing. There's not much left of the old neighborhood. I mean, the people. They everybody all left. picked up and ran, man. You know, once the neighborhood started changing, everybody just picked up and ran. And Sundays was a bowl of macaroni and smell his grand his grandmother's cooking. Man, wake up to the smell of spaghetti and sauce. Spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> She'd always have a plate of that ready for I me in the afternoon. <laughs> Keithy, bring me in that bowl of macaroni, Keithy. <laughs> Definitely, I love you. I love you too. Okay, babe. Play hard, play strong. I Be cool. Tony. This is Tony. She used to hairdress my mother's hair. And, yeah. What's nice here? Where do you live now? I live on 48th, between N and O. I come and let me see you come back. Because I don't really take this route. And I don't know if you're still here, actually. And I just... Hey, you're right, I don't. You know, what happened there, Joanne? Huh? How's that? My father? Yeah. He's right. It's crazy. Yeah. My father's out of his mind. That happens in life. That's music comments. Very good. good. Yeah, that's what they're here for now. Just doing a little special and, and just taking him around where I just pull it off. And... Yeah, we know him a long time when he went to school, running around. This is Tony. <laughs> I heard you play the piano well. Yeah. Soft music and hard music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Wow. Seventeen, eighteen years old. He's he a little kid. You know what I'm saying? Be on some stupid shit, bro. Hold up, bro. So now, do this. Cause you know, I got a gun in my house too, but I don't want to go through all that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't even want you there, man. 
Yeah, that's my people, so you know what I mean? I can't just let that be. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be back around, yo. You know what I'm saying? You gonna be alright? Yeah, I'm gonna be, be alright. What's going on, uh, Keith? But, um, somebody pulled a gun on one of them guys. When? Just before. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Who? You don't know? I don't know. Do those kind of things happen a lot around here, or? Um. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. I'm doing wait. Look at that. I'm telling you, I'm as strong as a bull, I'm telling you. <laughs> That's my man John DeVita. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Right? songs were written like over a three year period, you know? The record was, it took about six months to record the record. One stage you wanted to call the band Brandy Dufal, wasn't it? correct? Yeah. And then Roadrunner came to me at the 11th hour after I finished my record and all my intentions went into the Brandy Duval thing. Um, they told me that they didn't like it. Why not? They said it sounds too much like a lat Latino chick or something. Oh, yeah? I'm um, just for marketing reasons, you know? But, but were you offended by that? I mean... Yeah. Very much. 
I can imagine you getting very angry uh, because you made the album something like a year ago and... I'm trying to squeeze or subdue my anger and frustration. I want to get out there, man. I want to work my product, you know? But unfortunately, I can't, you know, I can't. But fortunately, um, you know, they have all of these big plans for me, supposedly. Hello, my name is Keith Caputo. <laughs> right over here. <clears throat> this is my band, the Candy Darling Band. This is Michael Korn on bass. This is Jared Kotler on the drums. And this is Mr. Robert Mastriani on guitar. They are the Candy Darling Band. And we're here to perform some special vibrations for you. I used to be so serious I used to be such a fool I rediscovered a sweet blend Some girl, did I do something wrong? Screaming people enjoying funny And who got their piece of the pie? Romantic love on suicidal Cobain was murdered by you 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 This kicking, you get me really sick, really sick. I run away to save the earthlings, so wound up within you. We talked about growing up with some comfort. The crow is eating my eye. Some pink and some yellow Cobain was murdered by Cobain was murdered by you Cobain was murdered by you Lara Vecchini, you played all those metal festivals and all those met metal gigs and people know you from that that time. Do you think they're still interested? Well, people now know that I was stuck in a situation that I really didn't want to be in. And it just took me a little time to realize where I was and what I was doing and where I needed to take it and go. You know, this is... Um, you know as if I were to touch my own canvas, you know, create my own hues. But aren't you afraid that people won't, won't have it? I mean, won't, won't like it? Or? Um, no, I don't fear that. I don't fear it. Or I don't even think about it, to be honest. I I think that, you know, I think it's good, man, you know? I think it's good music. And, um, you know, it's good rock and roll. I'm giving a, a, I'm introducing what I'm about to embark on. This is just an introduction, this record. It's just, it's, it's the birth of 
what's now becoming or where I'm going. You know, and if, if I, don't, I don't fear it, man. You know, if people aren't into it, they're not into it, whatever, you know? This is it. There's my grandma. <laughs> Hello, my mother. How are you? Oh, yeah, honey. How do you feel? Good. Yeah? Yeah. You all right? Oh, yeah, how are you? <laughs> Are you all, are you all together? It's nice. My little boy. How do you feel? Oh, yeah? Hello. How are you? How are you? Good. How do you do all of this? Here they are. Mm -hmm. This is Pauline. This is my mother. She's really my grandmother, but she's, in essence, my mother, because she took care of me and provided a very healthy, stimulating, loving atmosphere for me. And this is my crazy grandpa. <laughs> How do you do with you? How are you? Okay. We, I was filming with them for three days, four really? days. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the fourth day. This is the last day they're going back home tonight. This well, is my baby. The gods are taking care of us. So, this is my mama. How are you? How are you, sir? I'm good, <laughs> ma'am. How are you? <laughs> How do you feel? Great. Good. Great. I'm only staying for a little while, because i got to go back to Brooklyn. Oh, you just screwed me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be back. You will? Yeah, I'll be back this weekend. Not Great. tonight? Not tonight, because I'm going out with this girl, Jessica. Oh. Do you see each other a lot? Do we see each other a lot? He's asking if if we see each other a lot. Do we keep in touch a lot? Us? Yeah. We, we were always together. Yeah. Yeah. What's he like, Keith? He's a good, good kid. Yeah. Good. Ne never known better. You just didn't know all the bad things that I did. Right. <laughs> I kept it all a secret from you. You did? No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. That's not your friend. Gramp, yes it is. That's me. That's my father. He should be here. Well, I'll probably be gone before he gets here. Probably. That's my grandpa. Wow. Whose car was that? What was that, a Ford? No, oh, my, uh, what car? Who else? And this is my grandfather and my grandma, who was just dancing, and her sister. And um, this is my Aunt Ginny and my Uncle Tom with his kids. He wanted to adopt me, too. There was an adoption war. There was a bit with the family. Everyone wanted to adopt me. I feel so loved. No, I won. Uh, yeah, you won, but Aunt Ginny still. Yeah. And there's Joey. Joey Gies is And there's my grandpa, there's my parents again. My cousin Zam, that went to the Marines. Yeah. Um, the Marines, no. Here's me, Joey, and my cousin Chris. That's Joey and me when we were kids. Um, you proud of me? Of course. I think you can tell that, I, that I'm proud of you. Well, tell them. Just the kisses I give you. You don't ever kiss me. I always kiss you. They're full brownie. I used to have to beg you to be hugged and kissed. Okay. <laughs> kiss. Thank you so much. What? What do you mean, kiss? Where's mine? 
That's why I'm hustling and bustling. So I bring back the fortune to my family. Right? I'm not laughing, I'm dead serious. That's why I do the things that I do. Good, that's good. So I can protect and preserve my entire family. Because right. I believe that I can. I know you can. Because <clears throat> we're computers. And computers right. never die. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I just get through this every night. <laughs> get <Getting> bombed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's been bombed every night. And yeah, the, the Germans were good. Yeah, I hate to see it. I love you. Tomorrow, uh, weekend. I'll give you a call. Call me, stranger. I figured out my crazy sexuality. I'm not the way I used to be. Cleanliness is not me off my feet. Keep on keeping on. anybody's mind, but I want to instill depth into individuals, or my listeners. And what's your state of mind now? I'm calm, I'm happy, I'm hungry, I'm restless, um, determined, uh, a bit fearful. Fear is good up to a certain point. What do you fear then? I fear... Maybe I, I still fear not being accepted. Not through the music though, just in general. Mm -hmm. You know? On personal levels. You feel kind of outcast? <laughs> yeah. I feel like an undesirable sometimes. Yeah. Who gives you that feeling then? Me. The evil in me. You know. Into the kitchen. Stay in the kitchen. <laughs> Stay into the kitchen. I'm staying. Yeah, spin, mama. Well, Lynn, Lynn. <laughs> <What are you? laughs> Come on. 